Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. It's great to see you. You too. What, it's only been a month, not even a month since the mile. Yeah, maybe, yeah. three weeks maybe, almost a month, I guess, but yeah. For, for whatever reason, it seems like a long time. Maybe so many different things have happened. Since exactly, then. yep. So for background for my listeners, I met John a couple of weeks ago at the Mile High Sci-Fi and Fantasy Con, and we had a table next to each other, and it was very cool to hear about his books. So we're going to just jump in. Tell us about what you write, John. Um, so I write kind of what I call fun, fast science fiction um, in the vein of like Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Farscape, Serenity, that kind of thing, uh, where, you know, the it's there's they're action packed there's they're very much in the space opera vein and that you know I'm, we go faster than light we've got gravity and nobody really thinks too hard or explains how any of that stuff works um so it's uh yeah that's kind of i i always advertise it as like yeah it's basically guardians of the galaxy in print that's awesome because that would be my kind of sci-fi because when people get into the heavy technology stuff i just start skimming yep <laughs> yeah, same here <laughs> Yeah, with the Martian, my husband was like, oh, all this is so cool. And I was like, okay, I'm skimming this part now. <laughs> yeah, outside of like the fun names that he gave things in that, I was like, I don't actually need to know what kind of a yield X number of potatoes will give in Y number of days. Like, <laughs> And for us that are not total sci-fi nerds, explain what space opera is. So space opera is one of those like vague-ish terms it's often, you know, Star Wars is usually kind of held up as space opera, but also it falls into like space fantasy. Uh, it's basically just kind of space opera tends to be galaxy spanning. Your characters are crisscrossing the galaxy, lots of planets, lots of ships, um, kind of depending either, you know, lots of aliens or no aliens kind of just goes either way. I, both each of my series is kind of fits into one of those. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of the the big broad space action adventure. Very cool. Yeah, I the first time I went to Sci Mile High Sci-Fi Con, I was blown away by all the costumes and just everything around that world. And I came home and I was like, what is steampunk? Like I had to look it up and I was so embarrassed. And then my uncle of all people was like, what are you talking about with a steampunk? I read that all the time. And I'm like, oh my goodness, a whole new world opened up for me. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell us about your series. Uh, so I have two series uh, right now. I have sp my Space Rogue series, which is my longest running, the first series I wrote, which is very kind of found family, misfit toys kind of adventure. The main character is uh, an astronaut that his experimental ship breaks down towards the outer edge of our solar system. And then basically some pirates and smugglers find him and realize that, well, they can't really bring him home because it's the whole, our whole system in this universe is in like a primitive protected status, kind of like a nature preserve almost where the, the galactic government is like these, this group is way too primitive. You can't, they're not ready for contact. You got to leave them alone. So they, they're kind of stuck with him. They can't take him back to his planet. They feel bad leaving him to die. So they take him back out into the greater galaxy and, the story unfolds he ends up kind of with his own ship and very lonely for the first few years and those are kind of just in flashbacks and then he, he gets a crew kind of hot podge kind of together brings them together and then they just kind of stumble into galactic conspiracies and all these other just kind of adventures each book is written there they all follow an overarching kind of plot but there's they're very much meant to be standalone in that if you picked up the fourth one, you might be a little confused for a few pages of figuring out who's who, but otherwise like it's a very, very much like an episode. Um, there's no cliffhangers, there's no, you know, things like that you could pick up or stop anywhere in there and be okay. Um, and then the second series, and I very much have kind of just a thing that I like, uh, is also very space opera-y, but set in a universe where we haven't encountered aliens and it's all just humanities expanded into the greater galaxy. We've got you know, wormhole engines that kind of, that's what facilitates it all. 
And so it's just this galactic empire of humanity and the main character is just kind of, he's a war orphan trying to get by. He's got, in this universe, there's, there's droids. And so the, the, his other kind of pals are these just kind of very snarky artificial intelligences that are along for the ride on his adventures. Very cool. And I started reading the first book in that series. That was, that's the Grand Human Empire series, right? Yeah. I started reading the first book last night and I haven't read that type of sci-fi probably maybe since middle school. I don't know because, well, you, I, you heard I read The Martian, but because I, I read all the Star Wars series in middle school and that's how oh, yeah. I and so I have the Star Wars movies in my head and I was like how is this going to translate into someone writing about it but um it did and I I'm, <laughs> half, I'm maybe on the second or third chapter now I think so I'm enjoying it awesome glad to hear yeah and I love how you describe all the droids and how they kind of have personalities and yeah it reminded me definitely of the Star Wars type Number four, five, and six, at least. We won't talk yeah. about the other one. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear you have a new release in that series coming out. I do, yeah. Uh, book three in the Grand Human Empire series comes out November 11th. Uh, it's called Ghosts of the Past. And uh, it's basically, this, so this, uh, this series, I've basically all released the first two books this year. I've kind of been rushing through writing these. Um, and the third book is, yeah, Another Adventure, uh, for Jackson, the main character, and they kind of, without giving things away, they they stumble on, it's kind of a scavenger hunt book. I, I like to mix in, the other thing I like to mix in with, particularly this series more, I guess, than the Space Rogues a little bit is um, kind of heisty, um, almost, I, when I'm writing, I tend to watch a lot of just older TV shows just as, to, you know, kind of keep my creativity flowing, and I've been watching a lot of leverage, so I tend to incorporate a lot of, like, heist you know, either train high style stuff or museum job type things. And so uh, in this one, there's a bit of a scavenger hunt, piecing together clues for this kind of ultimate prize that everyone is fighting for at the end. Fun. And are there huge villains in either of your series? Um, like yeah, and, and that type of thing. <laughs> yeah. In Space Rogues, I've kind of, I, I started down a path where, um, let me close the slides. Um, I started going kind of down the path of this like super big bad villain and I realized that I didn't necessarily want the series to be focused on them because part of the series is that they're really just a bunch of nobodies that keep finding themselves in these situations so I didn't want suddenly them to be like oh the galaxy depends on these nobodies to save it um, so the big bad guy in that series he kind of comes and goes and then part of that story is that I always have like newscasts as like you know, kind of chapter breaks and things. And so like, as we get going, their stories kind of diverge and we only hear about the big bad in news breaks of things that are happening in the greater galaxy while this group is, you know, robbing a bank because the bank ripped off, you know, an orphanage type of thing. And then, you know, meanwhile, there's this, fighting going on in the border areas of the galaxy kind of thing. Oh, so they, they have their own problems to think about, not the big overarching problem. Exactly. And every once in a while, their, their problems collide with the overarching galactic problems. But yeah, I tried to make it like, I found myself, I was like, I don't want them to be the, like, saving the galaxy all the time. So yeah, like, the galaxy's got its own problems and is dealing with them. And then, yeah, my characters are dealing with their stuff. And we know that the galaxy's got its thing going on, but yeah, my, my crew is not necessarily saving the galaxy in every book. Sometimes they do, but. Fun. They, yeah, I can't wait to like read this whole book. I probably will finish it this weekend. <laughs> Which is the you, nice part about mine for sure. Yeah. How did you get into writing? Um, I've always, so this is a little bit of a longish medium like story. Um, I've always enjoyed writing um, as a kid. That was where I always excelled in school and things like that. But kind of to, like after that, I was my one of my first corporate jobs. My colleague and I, we commuted. We lived in California and we had a really long commute. It was like an hour on a good day. And so we would always go in really early just to avoid some of the traffic. And we stopped. We would stop at Krispy Kreme and always pick up a couple dozen donuts for the office every cup, you know, once a week. And it started out, I would, you know, fire off an email to just our group of friends, you know, hey, there's donuts, you know, in my cubicle, come and enjoy. 
And over the first few weeks, that, that email kind of took on this life of its own to where I started writing these short stories about donuts. Um, and at the end of the story, it was always, it kind of just wrapped itself up nicely into, and by the way, there's some donuts in my cubicle, but it was like aliens that came and were shaped like donut. I mean, just whatever I could think of just kind of on the fly. And so that kind of like rekindled my creative writing. I hadn't really done much, like kind of dropped off after school and then kind of was reborn for that. Um, and then it was 2016 uh, NaNoWriMo, which I've entered for probably close to a decade up to that point. And just always, as probably most people do, I would just fall off. I, you know, I'd write the first day and then I'd write the second day, then I'd skip the third day. You know, and then that little moving average on the website that shows your pace would start to like get up there and it's like, okay, you know, you miss one day and it's 1600 words. You miss two and now you're 3000 words behind and it just starts to compound. And then I was like, I'd always just be like, well, I'm out. I, I can't, can, I can't do this. Um, but 2016, it just, just kept flowing and I just kept going. Um, and that was the first Space Rogues book. And so when I finished, I was like, oh, well, I now have a, I have an actual book that I've finished writing. Um, I should probably clean this up and then figure out what to do with it. And so that, yeah, I self-published that book. And that was, I realized how much I liked writing at that point again, it had kind of definitely rekindled that spark. And so, yeah, I just, I had a group of characters that I liked writing about. And so I just kept telling their stories. Super fun. Yeah, I think that's what happens for me too. I just love my characters and then my stories, it sounds like yours, like they're really character based and. I just want to have fun with, well, part of mine has overarching things, but I just want to have fun with the characters. Exactly. What, where do you think you get inspiration? Do you have like series you love or books you love or other authors? Um, yeah, I definitely refill my creative well from a lot of sources. Um, there's definitely I, lots of stories I've read. I'm currently kind of rereading some of the older Star Wars novels. Um, just in between other stuff, I'm going back and like reading, you know, now they're all the legends stories, the stuff that they, you know, wrote in the 90s when they kind of relaunching the Star Wars universe. Um, more recently than that, there's two authors that I really like their work. It's um, Joshua Dalzell does the Omega Force series, which I take a lot of inspiration from, from just the team dynamic. Like well, the other thing I kind of like, especially in the Space Rogues universe, is that they don't always like each other. Um, they, they didn't know each other prior to this. In a few scenarios, they were forced to be together and then it just made sense to stay together. And so they kind of have to become friends and found family over the course of a few books. And so I like that, you know, like in that scenario, you're not going to always like the person in the room with you or necessarily agree with them or not make fun of them when the opportunity presents. <laughs> um, and then um, Rick Brown is right, writes the Frontier Saga story and is a good model for anyone that's like, right, wants to write a really long series. His Frontier Saga, I feel like is like 20 odd books long. Wow. Like he just keeps on going. And, you know, some they're not the most fast paced story because he's stretching this thing out really big, but and it just spans this whole thing. But um, they're really engaging. And I just stumbled on them years ago and, and really liked those. And then, um, you know, like, as I mentioned with like leverage and stuff, when I'm writing, if I'm not sitting in my office here, I usually go out into the living room with my iPad and we'll just put something on in the background just to have something playing. And it's almost always old sci-fi show, Babylon 5, uh, just finished watching like uh, Almost Human, which only had one season, which was a shame and Dark Matter and just anything that I remember watching from the from before and then I can find online and I just kind of watch those. And so those are just kind of always there in the background, just kind of reminding me of fun things that I enjoy about science fiction stories. That's very cool. Yeah, I have like this, me and my aunt is a very huge Star Trek fan. So every time I go to her, her house, we're always binge watching Star Trek. Nice. And I just have such good memories of that. Yep, I remember like as a kid, like my first kind of exposure to science fiction and Star Trek in particular was The Next Generation. My parents, particularly my dad are big sci-fi fans. And so when that show came on, like 
it was, and of course this was, you know, when it came on, we didn't have DVRs and <laughs> YouTube or anything. And so like, it was a thing, like the whole family got together and made sure that we'd eaten dinner and everything. And like, we sat down and, you know, if you had to go to the bathroom, you had to hold it till the commercial break kind of, yeah. and, you know, watched every episode of Next Generation as they came out. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. I didn't watch it as a kid. I guess the only sci-fi I probably saw was the first like movie movie I can remember seeing in the theater was Star Wars. Like it was such a big deal to go to the theater for our family. Like, and my parents, I don't never forget. They took us out to eat because we went out to eat every Friday night at this one hamburger place. And they were like, we have a surprise for you. We're going to a movie. And we were like, so thrilled. That's awesome. (laughs) Of course, that dates me a little bit. But anyway. (laughs) But I could just, yeah. And we had this really old theater in my small little hometown. And it was more, it was for theater productions, like live theater productions. And they, oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know if they always had a movie screen there because that's the first time I'd ever been there but we even sat up in like the balcony and watched Star Wars. Oh how cool. That was very cool. Yeah. Nice. How many books are in your Space Rogue series? Um, so Space Rogues currently has nine books. Um, I'm writing the 10th now um, and it's one where I, I have no idea if I don't think 10 is going to be the last one. It's certainly not shaping up that way um, so I don't imagine I have an end in sight. It's one of the I figure if they have run out of having adventures, I'll either spin off a series with different characters, but um, yeah, it's uh, the 10th book. I haven't picked a release date, but it'll probably be early next year. Wow, you, you're you really prolific each year. That's amazing. I try and get out like two to three books a year, um, uh, which is a, a good year for me. Usually it's on the two side more than it's the three or more <laughs> side. Um, but yeah, with my other job being conferences, I have lots of like ebbs and flows of, of busyness. And so when it's a, a slow period, I'm like, okay, I got to get words in. I got to get this stuff. Like I got to like build up. Ideally, like I'll finish writing Space Rogues 10 this, probably next month. Maybe I'll be able to get another book written this year. And then that way I have, basically I try and get the year's releases done as early as I can, potentially the year prior. Um, just to have, keep having stuff. Nice. Yeah, I'm always impressed with these really long series. Because, do you constantly bring in new characters um, to add to the other characters? Um, a little bit, but not a lot. I've realized as I've gone through Space Robes, there's a handful of like kind of tangential characters that come and go. Um, but really, it's been the core group from book one. Uh, I guess I added one new character like some, uh, I feel like book four. Um, and then from four on, it's been the same group basically the whole time. Um, other than, you know, one book, there's a bit of a tease that someone might die and then they weren't and things like that. But yeah, and then beyond that, like nobody else has worn, a, you know, they'll come in for a book or two and then kind of fade away and maybe come back. But yeah, no one, no one really is like always in every book, but as a secondary character. Okay, very cool. Yeah, those sound really cool. I enjoy them. I have to use my cheat sheet here. And (laughs) I think you already answered this, but my favorite question is to ask authors, what do you want your readers to get from your books? Um, For me, it's a laugh. Um, I want them to, to read them and just enjoy them. I want them to put the book down and be like, that was a ton of fun and hopefully keep them, you know, because we all have like, you know, those books that we read and then we're like, okay, I read that. And it, you know, gets into a little free library or it gets gifted or whatever. But then we also have those books that we'll reread every, you know, couple years or whatever. Um, I'd love to think that mine, you know, make it into that kind of keeper pile of like, you know, these are so much fun. I want to come back to this in a few years and, you know, redo it and re-laugh at at the stuff. Um, I try not to be too like, yuck yuck funny in the books but I definitely humor is a big part of just I tend to like laughing a lot and being funny and so in both of the series there's lots of humorous elements from every once in a while there's like a spit take or like a physical gag to just you know ribbing and making fun of each other and things like that 
Nice. I can imagine the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack going in the background. So. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. So, John, tell us where we can find your book. Uh, or where you can we find can my, find you, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me and my books at johnwilker.com, J-O-H-N-W-I-L-K-E-R.com. Uh, you can buy directly from me, as well as all my books are available wide. And so, I, as I like to say, wherever fine electronic books are available uh, is where you can find any of my work um, of, of the series, as well as they're all available through libraries, uh, both in paper and ebook. Uh, you probably have to request it, but they're all available to be requested. Nice. And do you have any books in front of you that you could show us a cover? I didn't prep you with this, so. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, I just, because while we were at Mile High Con, I had, uh, I had readings and so I had like super prepped. And so I made sure to have like versions with like the most recent covers and things like that. So this is the first book of the Grand Human Empire, Any Job Will Do. That's the one I'm reading, yep. And then this is the first book in the Space Rogue series. It's a six by nine, so I have to pull it back a little bit more. Nice. Um, but yeah, so those are the two covers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today, John. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.